site visit where I was taken around for about three four days just seeing site after site after site knowing that he was interested in doing a you know a geometric labyrinth meaning like using the triangle format it was the idea kind of to, to put it into a more urban environment made sense so we really kind of started focusing more on that instead of sites that really dealt more with the landscape such as the beach or you know Sugarloaf you know coming down here we uh, you know, saw this space and noticing a lot of the different things about it, such as how it's really a space of transit. So you have a lot of people walking through it, people from all walks of life kind of coming in together. The architecture is really amazing. You know, you have the library, you have municipal buildings, and you also have the theater there. So there's a, a, a wide range of things that just happen to go on here. He also always has an idea of like what scale we were looking at. He was like some looking at somewhere in between, you know, 11 and a half to 12 and a half meters, meaning on the walls. So we needed a space that could also accommodate that. So this space was perfect for that as well. It's also important that it doesn't really get in everybody's way to act as a barrier for their everyday life. So it, it can kind of be lived with. This is the first glass labyrinth. The, um, the first labyrinth he made was a plywood. He's used marble, uh, then he's also used recently chain link fence a few years ago. And he's been wanting to, you know, try to make one of glass. So this was a great opportunity to do so. Um, one of the really nice things about glass is, as I say, it, it does have that really nice reflective quality. Also, you get this um, kind of filter because you have one piece of glass here and then your next piece of glass here and your next piece of glass here. And it starts to create a little bit of a disorientation. The whole kind of idea of a labyrinth is, you know, you, you walk through it, and so you're experiencing the space you're in. But by adding this transparency, you're not only experiencing that small space that you're in with your body, you're experiencing the whole space that that labyrinth is in. So it, it really adds a nice element to the whole progression of movement. You have your exterior viewers, and then you also have your interior viewers that actually do experience the piece by walking through it. You can really experience in either way. He makes work, you know, very much that is accessible to everyone, but with a lot of the things he's dealing with, this kind of just basic things of, of movement and, and form where you come into contact with them and dealing with an environment like this, then it's really dependent on you to really almost complete that experience. And one of the important things, especially a public piece, is, you know, executing the concept, but also making it safe. You know, especially one that people are actually coming into direct physical contact with. So we start out with um, galvanized steel frame and we have um, special clamps manufactured. Then, you know, the glass is put into the clamp. We have a steel border here and a, a steel rim on the top. So these things are all kind of locking the glass into place. Then you have gravel being poured into that because, you know, this isn't a permanent piece, it's only open temporarily, so we can't actually secure it to the ground. So there's a huge engineering process um, that goes into these. And so once we have the plans and everything's in place, it's really just a matter of executing those plans. I'm looking forward to see how people interact with it, and I really think the, the best way to really experience and to understand the piece is to, to uh, experience it for yourself and to uh, walk through it.